everyone who's watching, welcome to Leap with Tech. Uh, today we're talking about the furniture vertical and technology and AI solutions in it and for it and ideas. And uh, well, if you're in this industry, you definitely need to stay tuned to this episode because we're going to cover a lot of very interesting cases. So uh, to get away, Colby, like what, what are we starting with? What do you have in your mind? Let's let's consider kind of just a general mid-sized regional furniture manufacturer um, that's having some issues with inventory management and, and delivery to logistics side of things as well as finding ways to customize and, and grow their design side to be more of what people want. You know, how, how to mm -hmm. gather that information and that data to, to figure out what's going to sell, right? There's a lot of ways that we can analyze these preferences from customers, whether that's just gathering data online or prototyping. That's kind of the way I would lean in this conversation is using the AI to create realistic models to help reduce time. To me, this industry, the furniture industry in general, is interesting because uh, I always operate from the perspective of a, of a problem. What is the problem? We know that every company needs to grow. Growth is always the problem. But what is the actual problem in the furniture business? My understanding is that uh, the problem with growth there is that no company actually has any understanding of the future. They cannot predict it. They operate based on the historical data, just historically in, you know, Irvine, California, or like in Plano, Texas, we know that we will have, I don't know, 10,000 visitors in our store from November through April or whatever. Historically, it's that, it's like that. But there are so many other factors that, first of all, that could be considered, like AI could help consolidate the, the move in, move out data, for example, which is based on the houses sold, houses in the area sold, rented, how many people moved into the city, how many people moved out, you know, what the demographics of those people is and all that stuff and consolidate that, consider that. And if you have an influx of people moving in, you probably can forecast that those people will need furniture at some point and they will come to your store. That's just one of the basic things. But on a more strategic level, I feel like the problem with not being able to forecast the future lies in the react reactive nature of this business. The furniture store is just there, right? If it's a snowfall, nobody comes. If like you open your doors, some people will come in. You don't know who they are. You don't know why they're there, what the motive is. So you're reacting to their need. It means that yeah. the demand is not transparent to you at all. The supply is there. The problem is that the furniture land south or Nebraska furniture or any other like regional mid-sized furniture manufacturer, they don't know who's going to yeah. come, when they're going to come, if they're going to buy, what they're going to buy, how much and all that stuff. And on top of that, we have user experience problems. When you're in a large store like that, you're overwhelmed. Sometimes even like, you know, one thing you, you, you need a table or a desk or something, then you end up looking at beds and your wife wants to stop by, you know, and look at the shelves, stuff like that. And it just becomes a very cumbersome experience. While some French stores, I noticed like French Land South, for example, we mentioned this in our previous podcast on the website, they have this section with interior designers. And we're jokingly talking about it that I can't understand how one can make a decision based on the pictures on the website, like right? who they want to work with, or even like if they have some cases, a previous work, it's really hard to picture yourself working with that person just based on that. But if you had a mobile first experience for your potential customers, there is no barrier then for them to use the service, but the service, it could generate that demand and could provide that transparent forecasting, basically. Because what happens if your customers have a mobile first experience with you and you have an AI that is the, the interior designer, you want to know where, you know, where that table will go. Sure. Amazon provides the service already. Like it's just yeah, basically right. augmented reality, right? You can yeah, see it in your like, location, see it in your, yeah, see it in your room. Sure, that thing is that thing already exists. What I'm talking about is actual AI 
interior designer who will take a look at your room while you're like you're holding a phone and your camera is on and not just tell you where to put that table, but also tell you, actually, now that I understand the layout of your house or your apartment, you should move that stuff around, maybe get rid of that. Also, here are some things from the store that are on sale right now that you could actually replace that old thing with, and those will work much better over there, and it's just like 100 bucks extra. So it's an upsell mechanism as well. And then you get this very comprehensive, very easy to use, no barrier process when you can actually generate demand rather than just yeah. being a, you know, a siloed waiter, right? You're just waiting there for people to come. That's exactly. the difference between proactive and reactive approach. Yeah. Well, and like you said, you know, it's like having an AI customized checkout line because who hasn't been guilty of that? You know, you're at the supermarket and you're, you go into that checkout line and you're like, I absolutely don't need this, but somehow it still ends up in your buggy. It still ends up, you know, getting checked out and coming home with you just because it's there. Yeah. And you're like, no, actually, that'd be a great idea. So having something that even more, more custom to you as a user can suggest things like that, you know, that's going to every one or two of those things that is purchased by an individual is going to vastly increase, you know, your, right. your, the money that you're making every month. You know, just from yep. something simple like that. So, yeah, I, I agree. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it, it all starts with the supply and demand. Basically, that's, you know, that's where the growth is. Those items that you that you mentioned at checkout, that's funny because it works. Like, they yes, wouldn't be there if it didn't well. work, right? It works. And all the attempts by businesses to integrate some kind of upsell mechanism into their apps before, it was always like kind of pushy, you know, when you, if you're using Waze Maps, you see those little notifications when you stop at a, at a traffic light. Uh, hey, you know, eat at McDonald's is just only like 0 0.2 miles away from you. But it might be relevant, might not be relevant to you. Like that's not a guarantee that it's going to work. With this approach, what's interesting is that it's value-based. The person is letting you into their home, but yeah. not just to the algorithm, to an intelligent AI assistant that will know even like, okay, so your house is at that address. It means that the east is there, the west is there, the house, like the, the sun goes like that. That's where you have the most light. So it's much more sophisticated. It's a much more sophisticated personal approach than even a person could provide. And the AI assistant could integrate so many different factors into the help that it's providing that you will actually get the most out of it. Like we're actually working on uh, a project like that right now for a construction company. And the, the demand for, for this stuff is already there. I feel like if you're in the furniture business today and you're not thinking in this direction at all, like you're going to, like you're going to miss the train entirely. It's just, it's already moving and it's, it's accelerating really, really rapidly. If you're not even thinking about it, well, like you still think that the old, oh, well, our, our, our clients are conservative. Well, most of our customers are conservative customers who like to just shop around and be slow and all that stuff. That's a mistake. Like some yeah. of your customers are like that, but the younger customers, those who are 18 through 25, who are just now creating families and they're moving in together and they're going to be looking for the experiences that they want to have based on the world-class products that they use outside of your store, like TikToks and Instagrams and all that stuff, where they pushed things all the time, like some custom furniture maybe, or like some indie furniture, whatever. But those are just little pieces, but they're already competing with you. The platforms are competing with your store that's not even on the platform. No one wants to follow a furniture store on Instagram. Right. We're not saying that tomorrow you are just going to magically have five influencers working for you and, you know, your brand will shine. No, but you can break through to those people with the right technology if you're, well, modern enough, if you're relevant enough. And this stuff right now is up for grabs because the technology is already there. It's just that 
you need to make a decision like, okay, this is the direction we're going. Well, we're going after these young customers. We want to provide this experience. We're going to empower our interior designers to do a much better job if we do this. Are we going to be proactive rather than reactive and all that stuff? So it all comes to co comes down to using the technology to develop your non-tech business, in this case, furniture business. And honestly, I don't understand why this revolution is not happening yet. I guess we're just right at the beginning of it. And we're just waiting for that first company to start doing this. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, like, what have we been waiting for all this time? Now we have to catch up. But catching up is a lot harder than being the first. I was about to say, those late adopters are going to struggle because people are yeah. already going to be very familiar and wanting to work with these stores that were front runners. But on the other side of things, being one of the first people to take advantage of this type of technology and leverage it in a business like the furniture business, they're not just going to be on track. They're going to be so far ahead of the ball that it's yeah. going to blow their competitors out of the water, you know, as far as how many people are wanting to leverage their tools and are therefore continuing to buy. Not only is it going to drive traffic to their to this application and to their business for for what it's doing, uh, you know, its ability to help them select things and how cool it is, like the wow factor, but it's going to help them because it's going to continue to pitch more and more and more of the things that are exactly. sold in their store. And also it's logging all of this data. You know, obviously that's one of the biggest things that we talk about with AI is the amount of data and it's continual, continuous ability to grow and develop itself as it, re as it gets more and more user data. So yeah, keeping track of these things. Yeah, it's going to be able to help you predict things with, you know, extremely good accuracy when you're looking at the, at the future. And then you're not going to be in that reactive state anymore of this is what we're seeing. You know, this is what we've seen in these people. No, you're going to be able to see into the future and figure out where those trends are going. And uh, as a note, as a note, I want to I want to say that at Techery we run our company, we run these kinds of strategy and vision exercises all the time. Uh, if you're thinking about digitally transforming your enterprise, comment Techery below. We'll reach out. Uh, and what is Techery? Techery is a key technology execution partner to major enterprises like Sony, Plexus, others. Like we work with different businesses becoming their techno technology arm and helping them digitally transform. And especially the ones that are falling behind right now and the ones that need help. Oh, so, yeah. Comment techery below, we'll, we'll reach out and don't forget that the most important thing today from our perspective is to lead with tech.